Welcome to Real BMX Racing the Podcast. On today's episode, we have UCI Women's Under 23 Bella May. Bella, welcome to the show. How did this all start for you? Um, well, we moved house towards like to near a BMX track and I went past and there was a BMX race on. So I just like went in, had a look. I was about eight years old. Went in, had a look and I just like... There's all this screaming and everyone was like, it was mad. And I was like, this is sick. I turned to mom. I was like, I want to do this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So so did you have a bike at the time? Were you riding a bike at all? Or did, did you um, know about BMX? No, I had no idea about BMX. But me and my brother, we always like were on bikes and stuff. So we were riding like motorbikes, our pushies. Oh, like okay. um, we had like street bike so like for the skate park we had them so we started off on them for a bit and then everyone was like oh you guys are like kind of good at this so mum and dad like invested a bit got us a bike and then yeah just started from there and now I've had heaps of bikes (laughs) (laughs) do you we always ask did you ever did you keep your first race bike that you raced with no we didn't like We didn't know if I was going to be in it for ages. So we kind of just like sold it, got a new one with, yeah, I, I don't really keep bikes. (laughs) And what about your, what about your first trophy? Did you keep that? Oh, Yeah. There's in the shed is just full of trophies. I can't wait to get a grand trophy though. That would be sick. I don't have one of them. Oh yeah. Me too. (laughs) Those I'm always like, you got to take one. Don't take the stamps. You got to take one of them big trophies home. Yeah, well, I did get um, – when I came over, I've got um, – I think it was Gator Nationals I did. I got okay. one of those trophies, so I kept that nice. and bring that back home. Yeah, so that just sits there and reminds so, me of what so you're So you're in Australia, and obviously you're not doing the um, USA BMX. What is your guys' league out there? Is there something other than the UCI or – Um, so we have a national series, which is six rounds over like the whole year. So yeah, it's, it's not as like advanced as you guys. Like, I feel like you kind of have your stuff together. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. There's not many girls out here for us. Like there's, cause say is always away. Lauren's in America. And then, like, us younger ones, we're all in different states, so, like, we never come together to race. Right. But when we do, it's it's pretty hectic. We love it. The three of us are just, like, going at it because we're all just, like, the exact same speed. But we'd love to all just get together and ride together to build a team so that when we go against everybody else, it's, like, sick. How are the tracks in Australia compared to the tracks, like, in the States? I reckon they're a bit more technical. So when I went over there, I kind of was like, oh, what's this going to be like? I feel like everything over where you guys are is like very rolly and mellow and kind of easy. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we hear that. We hear that one. <laughs> yeah. But like writing our stuff. Then when I went to France, I was like, holy shit. Like, right. Right. That stuff is so steep. It's just like a whole different. It's weird. They're like everyone kind of trains differently in every bit of the world. Like the tracks are all built different. Right. It's cool though. We were looking at glass cow and we were just watching like the first jump on everything, how everybody was handling that. And we're just like, whoa, that one looks a little serious (laughs) right there. (laughs) Yeah. But I feel that that leaves us at a disadvantage as American riders. Like when we venture off and go to overseas, you know, to those tracks, like, you know, I don't know. There's a few tracks here that are technical, don't get me wrong, you know, but the majority of the tracks are more mellow and more flowy, like you said, you know. You That's just the just style. Really, you really are that... Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I found that when I came over, I was like, no one's no one's nice to anyone on the track. Like, <laughs> you come out of the gate, bang, <laughs> you're all together. So yep. that, was, that was a lot different. I feel like at home, everyone, like, has their bit like if you're going you kind of like give a bit of space 
Not in America, you just put your handlebar in the wheel, and if you eat it, you eat it. Yeah. Oh, man. Well, I, 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 I was going to say, I'll tell you, it's, it's different when you're in our age group because <laughs> we all like, we got to go to work the next day. So we're not yeah. as aggressive as you guys are on the, you know, the pro circuit. But, you know, we understand that you guys just, you guys are killing it out there. Who um who did you look up to when you were when you were, when you first started riding? Um, Caroline Buchanan and Lauren Reynolds. So those two, they were like the big it and the bit idols. I always loved Elise. So to like go over to America and kind of like get to know her was pretty sick. I loved that. But, awesome. Yeah. And so let me ask you this: you you looking up to Buchanan? Did you ever consider uh, hopping on a mountain bike and racing one of those? Not really. I, at one point, like when COVID was around, I got a mountain bike and I started doing that. But I think that was just like an escape from BMX and have a bit of fun, not like look at it seriously to compete in it. It was just a bit of fun. Like I love going to the skate park and stuff with my brother, but BMX is my thing. <laughs> so, I mean, in the States, mountain bikes, it took off like trail riding and mountain bikes um and competitions is it the same in australia yeah well pretty much since covid everyone got mountain bikes and now a few of the kids have like drifted over that way instead of staying in bmx so then yeah i feel like there's a lot of mountain bike races around but i don't really know the it and bits about it with so um with COVID, i was say with covid happening and everything did everything shut down like like crazy, like how it was out here. We couldn't really yeah. go anywhere. Yeah, we couldn't even go. We had ended up having like a distance barrier on us that we could only go five kilometers from home and you wow. couldn't. So everyone got home gyms like for training and stuff because like I was pretty lucky that I'm close to the track. Like I'm about three three minutes from the track, but that was that was locked and you weren't allowed to use it. And if like, say, police came past, they'd end up finding you for being out doing that but you could like i think it was you had an hour of the day that you could go do physical activity like out in the street or something like go for a walk they they gave you that but yeah you couldn't really do much it was kind of just like i think in america we just you're like no you're not going to tell us to do that (laughs) we just kind of just do our thing like you know we understand all right the track's not open okay that's cool we'll go do something else like we're just yeah we're not we're not going to sit at home people are just like we're gonna go there. Like they were like, you shouldn't be on the store. And I, you know, I was working retail at the time, and people would come in there and be like, "Yeah, I just didn't want to be home, and I just figured I'd walk around." And I'm just like, "So you want to come in here and kill me? That's awesome." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. That's that's how we world out here. So, what type of bike do you ride? Um, I ride a prophecy. So. Ooh. Okay. Yeah. Very nice. I just got one sent out to me by them. It's in, like inspired by a, being Australian champion. So I can send you guys a photo later if you want. Awesome. So yeah. that, so so who are all your sponsors? Um, so I have Fox. Um, so they like supply all my gear, armor, helmet, all them, all that stuff. Okay. I have Shred Bike Care, uh, Prophecy Twisted Co, CTD, which is like um components and stuff like that five which they give me in my rooms god um yeah and then like a couple of other side things that aren't like related to bmx that just help me out inside. Now, i've never heard of five are those carbon royals carbon wheels yeah yeah carbon rooms carbon rooms is yeah. that is that like the big brand that's out there yeah i'd say like yeah majority over here in Australia, run that. Yeah. What, it's like, what, what hubs are you running? Uh, Pride. So um, through CTD, we get Pride products as well. So like I run um, their hubs and STEM. And then I have Behringer cranks that we get through them as well. Ooh, those are nice. Yeah. <laughs> those are yeah. real nice. I like those. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Do you um do you do your own work to your bike? <laughs> no. My dad, my dad that. That's his that's his role. He okay. loves it. Okay. <laughs> I mean if it makes you feel any better, I don't I don't touch my own bike either. 
yeah, yeah I want to, I've been learning how to like in case I'm overseas and I don't yeah. have any help, but it's like he he likes it he enjoys that bit oh that's pretty yeah cool. I mean you could trust your dad you know right right yeah. like a mechanic I don't know <laughs> <laughs> um so also too I was gonna ask you when, when it came to prophecy how did that work out did um they just you were out there racing riding winning and they approached you or was it something that you wanted to go after um I wanted, I always like looked at a prophecy and loved it because I was on, I was on a sun at the time and I just like wanted something different. And then, so like our supplier of prophecies here is called Twisted Co. He kept like nagging me <clears throat> and my coach on a prophecy and I like, he had a spare one and I ended up just trying it. And then the guy hooked me up and he was like, here, have this. And I was like, oh, this is sick. <laughs> I could just rock up the door. Yeah, and then it kind of like grew. I went overseas and I guess like Prophecy kind of noticed me a bit more. And then like they just kept keeping in contact and started talking and then they were like, oh, let's do this bike. And then like that got sent out to me last week. So it's nice. pretty awesome. That's pretty cool. So you say one of your sponsors is Fox, obviously it's on your hat. Do yeah. They sponsor, do they sponsor a lot of BMX riders out, out your way? Nah. So there's me, my brother, and... Wade Turner. So I don't know if you, sure you know who Bodie Turner is, but um his brother. So there's only the three of us for wow. BMX. Yeah. Because Fox is more known for the motocross world. So it's kind of surprising that yeah. I saw you with the Fox on and I figured maybe you rode motocross also, but um nah, yeah, they like moto out here as well and a little bit of mountain bike. Very yeah. cool. They're really quiet in the BMX world. Yeah, I know. But they used to be big, you know, in the BMX world back in, I don't know, maybe the 80s or 90s. Or, you know, a lot of people used to ride Fox gloves and helmets. And yeah, a lot of like newbies, because they would just go to like the motorbike shop to get gear and stuff. So they all like rock up with Fox, which is really good. But there's like, I feel like I need to talk to them and make some BMX gear. So it's like suited to what we do instead of like either really tight mountain bike stuff or big and baggy motocross stuff. Right. You know, so there's like an in-between to get it out there. There you go. And that's funny. Just the other day, I went into a, there's a bike shop around my neighborhood and they've been open for about a hundred years, like the oldest bike shop around. <laughs> so he was like, come here, man. I got to show you something really cool, man. He said, nah, I don't know if it's worth any value. So I thought he was going to show me an old bike. So I started getting excited. You know, I'm like, oh, what's he going to show me? He's bringing me up to the attic with all the cool stuff. But then he opened up a bin and he had these like really cool fox pants. I wish I had them right here, but. And um, there were like some vintage fox pants that were never worn from the 80s. Wow. And he was like, here, take these, see what you could get for them. And I'm like, oh, my God, I'm holding these things up. They just look so freaking cool. But they weighed like probably 10 pounds. You know? <laughs> they, were, they were downhill mountain bike shorts, you know. But um, it was just yeah. so cool. And it just brought me back to that era where fox was it, you know, like everything was yeah. fox, you know. Yeah. yeah. Did, so, did you say did you say your brother races too? Yeah. So, yeah, so um next year's his first year in junior elite so we're both gonna go internationally into the world okay. cup team together wow and that's the goal that's right, pretty so that's pretty dope there. right there yeah well he's always been my training partner so really so that is, he, is so cool i was gonna say so right now is he faster than you or are you faster than him yeah he's way faster <laughs> <laughs> yeah his his skill and everything is like out of control. Yeah, it's like what classes do you race right now in UCI? Because isn't there a couple of them that opera, a couple of them you could probably do? Um, so UCI technically this year I'm a under I'm a junior elite, but next year because okay. I I just turned eighteen, then okay. I go into twenty three. Okay. And when you race the World Cups, there's no there's not enough girls <clears> to they. <throat> Put us together as under twenty three, so it'll be all the same girls Please anyway. Try. Okay, but, so you're uh, yeah. So here we have Supercross, which is, um, I mean Supercross. Sorry, <laughs> um, yeah. So that's like anyone that's sixteen plus can race in that, and that's either like if it's off an eight meter or not. It's the same. So as we all know, this is an extreme sport. Have you had any significant injuries that took you out for a little while? Um, I have been really lucky, touch wood. Um, I broke 
both my arms when I was 12 and that was that's about all I've had on the other hand my brother's been in and out of hospital <laughs> non-stop <laughs> yeah he's done like internal he's broken his elbow three times he's broken his wrist his leg yeah <laughs> Same Same so did you did, did you break both arms at the same time yeah okay that's what I was trying to figure I'm like were you just kind of oh like <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, pretty much. Just walking around with, they would have been like five kilos each. Just so, like, take take us through that. So, what exactly happened? Because I figured something like that was it from the like coming down that you ended up breaking them. Um. Well, I don't really know because I so I went around at our home track, the second corner, and my I remember my clip like coming out. I unclipped, went off the jump lip because I was going to jump the straight unclipped and it kind of just like bucked me I then hit like the down rep um lip and then I don't really remember the rest but I remember like crawling on my hands and knees because I was winded oh, like mum came over and she's like you're on your hands and knees like thinking oh you know you just winded real good and I sit up and like one was clearly broken that I ended up getting surgery and getting a pin in it and then we were like on the way to the hospital and I just like couldn't do anything because my other one and then the people at the hospital just like didn't even want to x-ray it. They're like, no, you just you're over exaggerating. Mum's like, no, nah, can you like can you x-ray it? Right. They, like, do your job. <laughs> they did it. They're like, oh yeah, you know, it's actually broken. You know, I'm so I guess the doctors are the same everywhere you go. Cause when I went in, he was like giving me the rundown of what happened when I crashed. And so I was just like, and I had to like ask him, I'll go, so let me ask you. I'm like, because I'm feeling all this pain. I'm like, did I break anything? He's like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You, you're going to break in like three ribs. Just just, just clean breaks. And I was like, that's something you might want to mention to me. You yeah. Know? <laughs> but when I went there, like I got lucky. So when I, I got to the hospital and the, obviously it sucks. I just had a brand new jersey. Those are my first time wearing it. Yeah. And they had to cut it off me in the ambulance. And I was like, just, just help me lift my arms up. Just pull it off of me. Like, no, we got to cut it. And I'm like, you act like I'm about to die. Like, just. Let me get it, let me get it off. And yeah. then um we get to the hospital and like the ladies were coming around, the nurses and everything, and they're just like, So what happened? And I was like, Yeah, I was on this double and I tried to jump up and over and I just quite didn't land right. And they're like, Oh my god, and my girlfriend comes out and she's like, What are you telling them? I'm like, Yeah, I tell them I was trying to jump the double. She's like, and they're believing that that you actually tried to jump something. And I'm like, well, they don't know. <laughs> like Shannon would have shaking his head. So he's like, so what happened? I was like, okay, the truth was I was making <laughs> I turned my tire a little too far and the rest of me just followed it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's why okay. I stick to the double. That's why I stick to the double story, because it just sounds so much better than I just yeah. ate it because on a turn. So and that's why his bike is on his bed and it stays there. <laughs> <laughs> Ask, ask him how many times he rode his bike. How many? I, just, I just got this one, so twice. So he he had it fault. for he had it for a couple of months already built and only rode it twice. He should be it's smacked cold. for that, right? It's cold. No. Yeah. <laughs> it's cold. So you yeah. you guys have indoor tracks? No. Yeah, no. Right. Wish we did, but nothing. If it's raining, it's like where I am, if it rains, it rains like all day. Where like in Queensland, it'll rain for 20 minutes and then you can still go ride the rest of the day. So we kind of just do like rollers or gym sprints. We have like a couple underground car parks, but the security will come out and they'll just like kick you out. They're like, it's not, oh, you know, really? really it's like, dude. Right. Like, so what's like, I know you're riding bikes, man. Get it, you know, do some real, find some real criminals. <laughs> yeah, do you, exactly. What kind of gate? Guys have do you guys have like the barrel gates? Do you have the, the um, what do you call the, the plat pro, pro gate? Um okay. so I went and rode Shepherd and last night. That's a um pro gate, so no barrel. Um okay. yeah, so I think majority of our eight meters are pro gates, and then like for the five, five and three meters, it's like a mix of barrel or not. Yeah. So have you ever ran the paddle gates, the ones that they run at Grands? Oh, the one track had like something similar to that, that there was like nothing connecting the gates that 
one would actually like go faster than the other. So like you'd want to be in like lane six or something. Oh but really? Lane... So <laughs> yeah. So if you got first, she knows exactly what lane feels. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, nothing's like that over here. Because when they introduced that gate to us, like we were all saying the same thing. There's one drop, you know, and they all swear that it just they release all at the same time and. You just push them down and that's it, you know. But some yeah. people are kind of waiting, you know, but not knowing that those things just get released and they they weigh nothing, you know. Yeah. So you can just kind of go right through them, you know. So when you're at the gate, do you have like a uh, like a special routine that you, I don't know, like, you know, the special like breathing or like stretches or like a prayer or anything that you do when you approach the yeah. gate? Yeah. <laughs> so I'll like roll into the gate um, with my – my right foot clipped in, I'll touch the gate, then pull my wheel off, chuck it back on, and then I stand up, he'll say, like, set. I rock forward, and then I, like, go back into my start position. Yeah, I don't really have any race day, like, besides my gate routines. Kind of just wing it, hope for the best on the day. Okay. So okay. do you watch the lights, or do you listen for the beeps? I listen for the beeps because over here, no one, like, really sets up the lights. So, like, as a kid, I never learned to look at them. But Oh, really? Like, talking with people, like, in Argentina definitely, like, makes sense why you watch the lights because, like, you see it before you hear it. So, I mean, I'm, if I could transition to it, it would be pretty cool. But we'll see how we go. So they just don't set the lights up? Are they being lazy? Like, what is that about? <laughs> I mean, it takes two seconds. You know? Come on. Yeah, well, like, on the eight meters, they'll set them up. But we don't get on ours very often because um, it got all flooded. So And it's two and a half hours away from my house. So we don't get on that often. But every time we're there, they'll set them up. But, like, our local track, like, they're all beginners, so they don't really – even know what like a gate start probably looks like or anything so they don't bother setting them up yeah with 24 yeah. approaching and i believe the olympics are in paris is that where the next ones are yeah are you are you looking to go there and represent your country there i would absolutely love to but i'm not sure if it's on the cards for this year just with like i think at the moment, we have two spots, which will be Lauren and Sayer. But I don't know, something happens. Hopefully, I could be a backup or something. Or maybe if points or something count this year and we end up with three, that would be pretty cool. I was going to say, how does that work out? Like each state gets like two riders, and then depending on where you place, you might get three? Yeah. So I think we're in the top five, which gives us two spots for Olympics, I think. So maybe if we can get in the top three, we might end up with three or something. I think it just depends. But we don't really have many elites. There's, I've, yeah, we don't have many, like, riders. There's Lauren Sayer and I think just, like, Aaron. So there's, yeah, there's nobody. It's kind of like our age are now, like, building and coming through because we had no under-23 riders, so... We have no – we've got one position for Worlds because you just get guaranteed that going in because we've just had no one collecting points. But for the juniors, there's been like five of us, so we've we've got a lot of points for our juniors to then go through and take a few of us. But me and Sienna are now moving into under-23s, so we're both, I think, going to be fighting for one spot again. Ooh. So you yeah. said you train with your brother. Do you, is your brother your coach? No, he's just my training partner, the one I do chase. A, do you have a coach? Yeah, so Nathan Glab, he's my coach. He was, he's a pro rider here in Victoria. Okay. He did a couple of, um, like he did Aussies and stuff like that, but he's definitely like rebuilt and put me in a good like schedule and program with like, um, I never knew like what a training cycle was of um, strength, God, I just forgot it. <laughs> Strength, <laughs> speed, and um, oh, what's the other one? There's another one in between. Putting me in that cycle of like really heavy stuff, then heavy stuff moving fast, and then like light, really light stuff going super fast. 
and then like change of gearing, flat pedal sprints, stuff on the track. Like I, it was always like burn yourself out and then do a race instead of like six weeks before the race, you do heavy stuff. And then when you're getting into the race, you're then on a spinny gearing lightweight. So you're just like at a peak. So I felt like going into Argentina, it's like my first time on the cycle going into that feel I actually like felt fast normally I'd go into a big race and I get sick or something because I've just been burnt out trying to get better and better but it's like the less you do the the more it helps you right yeah so going into Argentina I felt like at my peak and I feel like it kind of showed yeah it's nice so when you came to the states what was like your biggest surprise besides the riders riding aggressive more aggressive than just say you know the australian riders what was like the biggest um, surprise were and were the riders in your class were they friendly to you off the track yeah yeah everyone is like so polite off the track they all talk to you and stuff and then it's like it's like nice that you get on the gate and nothing matters no one's friends but then when you get off it's like oh hey how are you like okay. that, it's not like that here. Yeah, feel like business you, is business. Yeah, if you do something to someone, then they're like, "Yeah, no, not gonna talk to you again." Here, but like that really? was the thing in America. I was like expecting I cut somebody off and they just wouldn't talk to me again. Like that's what I was expecting, and they they come up to you and say good job and stuff. Like, yeah, it kind of <laughs> was really friendly over there, and everyone like wants the best for each other. And they say that's racing, bro. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's that, I mean that's kind of how it is here, but it just depends on who you like racing. Because there's I've had people like just dive in on me, and then he's like literally screaming, screaming in front of me. I'm so sorry, bro. I didn't mean it. I'm just start laughing. Like nah, that was clean, man. Just keep going. Just keep going. Yeah. <laughs> it's just apologize for yeah. racing, and just like you know, we're just out there having fun. So I mean, that's that's what's pretty cool about it. So yeah, how you, how often do you train? Um. Five days a week. So, like, my Monday schedule is sprints and gym. Tuesday, I'll do track. Uh, Wednesday is gym. Thursday is, like, gates at, like, a club, local club. Friday, I do sprints and gym. And then Saturday, I'll, I'll go for, like, just a ride with, like, our group of, like, our group of boys that, We'll go meet up at a track or something. Just have a chill session, and then Sunday is like a rest day. So, so gym like, days. Do you go to an actual gym, or do you have a gym at home that you work out at? Um. Oh, we got rid of our gym at home because okay. we just like once COVID was gone, we're like, oh, I just want to get out of the house, go, go do stuff physically. Yeah. So I'm in the Victorian Institute of Sport, so I go to that three times a uh, three times a week, and then. Any time, like, I feel like going to the gym or something good, like, doing upper body, I'll just go to, like, our local one that's, like, so, two minutes on the road. So I see on programs they split, like, track days and gym days. So just say, like, your track day comes and it is raining. What would you do to replace that? Um, would you get on like, rollers inside or, like, you know? Yeah, or I would just, like, replace it by just going to the gym. Kind of, like, I don't. Our coach has, like, said if you can't do something, don't worry about chasing it up in the rest of the week. Just, like, let it go okay. instead of, like, moving it around unless, like, weather's terrible all week and you kind of have to. But, yeah, just, like, roller sprints or something. Okay. It's pretty cool. I'm, like, I'm, like, because we're all taking it in. Like, literally, you know, right now when this is the beauty of what we do, we, we listen to you guys and, like, mentally we're both taking notes. Like, okay. <laughs> should be doing on the next time. So we you know talking about it later. Like, yeah, did you get that? Do you understand? That? I never thought about that. So we kind of just pick your guys' brain just to it helps us and helps the other riders who have no clue what they're doing. Yeah. We also like to ask too. So does your does your diet change going into a national? Like, do you like nah. tighten it up or is it just the same? You're on a meal plan or you just eat whatever? Yeah, I'm I'm on a meal plan from the BIS. So same thing every day, I guess, until I really, really get sick of it or something. Okay. But, yeah, it's always the same thing for lunch. And dinners will change, but they're the same thing every week. And and what is that? Um, 
<laughs> like salad, veggies, some form of meat, like a burrito bowl. Okay. Um, and then I'll do like homemade pizza and a burger. Like they're like my weekend like cheat nights. What's your favorite food? Uh, probably, probably a burger. Didn't get to eat many of them when I was away because I was with Sam. It was very strict. Didn't want to disappoint him. <laughs> nice. Um, so I was going to ask you too, like, how big is Sam Willoughby's legend out there? Like, you know, he's like really big out here. You know, he's always like, whenever I talk to the riders, I'm always like, if you can name your top five riders that you would put on your team, Sam usually falls into that category of who they would pick. Is he, yeah. is he like that big over there as well? I mean, even though you guys don't really have a lot of riders. Um, definitely like the older generation, like really they know who he is, but like the new kids coming in because he hasn't been here. And I guess, yeah, like the little kids wouldn't really know who he is, but like the 14 plus kids, like we all love him. Yeah. Yeah, he's amazing. Like when I first saw his videos. Yeah. And because we love like, you know, and Connor was our guy. And then we see like Sam a couple of bike links ahead of him. And we were like, hold on, who's this guy, bro? <laughs> like, this guy is fast, man. Holy crap. Yeah. Yeah. I loved my time with Sam and Elise over there. I'll do it again, over and over again. I'd love awesome. to. Yeah. This is Have you played the the sports? Yeah. Have you like you know, did anything else besides riding bikes or? Yeah, so two years ago, I had to pick between um, AFL or BMX. So it was like Australian titles or go try out to make like stingrays, which is before you like get drafted into a team. So I had mm. to, I had to make my pick then. So I, I love footy though. I'd go back and do that. But the thing of like getting injured and then not being able to do my main sport is like the thing that holds me back but bmx is what i want to do i always wanted to go to the olympics and it's been my goal since i was like eight of course i mean that's a big you know that's a big uh big step you know just to, just to even go there seems like it'd yeah. be like pretty intense yeah i mean was there ever a time in your career where you didn't want to ride anymore like you got burnt out or just maybe you had an injury and you were just like i can't do this no more or you know was there every time you wanted to give up? Nah, not yet. I haven't I haven't hit a point like that. I did like probably two years ago there was like a bit of stuff that happened and I I guess I didn't really want to train as hard as I normally would have. I just like would like really like my rest days more than my training days, but yeah, then I like I changed a lot of stuff. I got on a new bike and everything kind of was just like going the right way for once. So oh, that God. like fucked me again. Yeah, but I didn't really hit a point where I was like, I don't want to I want to quit. I don't I don't want to do this anymore. I mean, how much do you think having your brother involved in the sport also like you know motivates you to keep riding? Oh, a lot because we we go do gym together, sprints together, like everything. So if I don't want to go, he's like get get your ass up we're going we're like <laughs> <Yeah. of> <laughs> right nice. yeah that's pretty dope and i asked that because you know when i was young i rode i mean my brother was two and a half years older than me but we always went to the track together then yeah. he got older and got a license and started hanging out you know with his friends and girls or whatever and then i was just going to the track by myself and it just wasn't as fun yeah well he's two years younger than me so okay. I'm, the, I'm the one with the license that takes us <laughs> well, That's probably why he was like, get up. You know what I'm driving. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I do like driving um, to like to the gym. It's so much easier. But parking there is so, such a pain. Yes. Really? Yeah. yeah. Our gym's like really busy for some reason, but it's a good gym. Nice. Yeah. Do sponsors like, I mean, I don't know if I'm not asking you particularly, but do you know if like sponsors will ever pay for like gym memberships, like for you to train, you know, cause we always wonder like, like how much 
how much teams and sponsors like support the rider, like, you know, in traveling or bike parts or just whatever. And I just kind of thought of that, like, that's a membership fee and traveling and parking and whatever yeah. else, you know, I wonder if like, if there's any teams that will actually pay for that, you know, because it's something yeah. you have to do to represent their team and then be good. And, you know, you yeah. have to, at a certain point, you have to get in the gym. There's like no getting around that, you know? Yeah. I'm not sure. I don't have anyone that like pays my gym, but a couple of my sponsors like are on board that, if I do a good result, they'll like give me a bonus. Nice. So like that'll go towards flights and stuff. And I guess just like prize money that goes towards flights. And then like me and my brother, we coach, like that's our, I guess that's our full-time job. Like we don't have a normal everyday job. That's like, we love coaching the little kids. Very so. cool. So you guys are yeah. like running the clinics and everything. Yeah. So we have like our, we have two clubs that we're at weekly. So we want to grow that bigger now that I can like, we can get to other clubs that are like 40 minutes away or something. Yeah. Just that is that. awesome. That right? is awesome. I'm like, that's pretty cool. Wake up every day and just do BMX all day. You know, who wouldn't want to do that? Like, right. if, you know, right. Yeah. It'd be an amazing thing if we, if we, if we got, were able to do that, but yeah, it wasn't my calling. It seems like it's yours. So, <laughs> you know, that's pretty dope. Yeah. Yeah. I got, I got, and I, and I hate to ask this because I got a couple stereotypes that I need to, I got to ask. <laughs> um, Vegemite. <laughs> you, you see where I'm going with that one? Is, is that something you eat? Uh, yeah, if it's in the house, but it's not like a stock item for us. Oh, like really? People, yeah. Okay. People who might live on it, that's what they have for breakfast every day. But I eat a muffin and eggs every day. So okay. I don't, yeah, I was just trying to figure it out. And like the way you know, the way we see it over here is just like one of those things. Like, I guess we would say it's more of like a grape jelly or strawberry jelly for us that we, you know, you always have it ready to go or whatever. Yeah, most yeah, most families would like it always be in the pantry, but we don't we don't really have it. <laughs> okay, okay, and but um, also like my, my second one is. How big are the the spiders? I keep hearing like you guys' spiders are huge. Um, our huntsmen's they're probably like our biggest spiders, but we always have like I don't know. There's always spiders in every room in your house. Like it's kind really? of really, yeah. So like the daddy long legs, they're just like okay, yeah. Those yeah. are pretty. Those are yeah, those are pretty cool. Yeah, so they're like our scariest spiders to other spiders, but to us they. Just like keep everything else away, but right. they don't like bomb us, so you just keep nice. them around. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's pretty cool. So, um, you raced grands this year too, right? No, I didn't. You didn't race grands this year? No, I I've never, I never have. You've I never would, been to grands? No, me and my brother want to come next year if it's affordable. Okay. Yeah. There we go. He's, he's, back, he's back in. I got booted out. So yeah, I for some reason I thought she raced grants before, but she says she wants to just she wants to do it next year. She hasn't been here yet. Yeah. What are we talking about? Grants. Yeah. <laughs> he hasn't been, but he will be there next year though, and racing. Talking about Everett. Me too. It's I mean, yeah. I mean, because it's like one of those things. It's like I always tell people, I'm like, it's the Super Bowl of BMX. All I know is it's electrifying when you're there. You're on a whole nother level. Like yeah. it's just you're like you know. I mean, this is what it's what they live for, and it's what I live for. I want to get there. I raced as a kid, and I was always like, man, I want to go. I want to go. But you know, my mom wouldn't have. She wouldn't have drove anywhere for me like that. So yeah, we don't sure. have like this, like that here. Like our Australian titles is like our biggest race but it's nothing to compare to like what grants looks like like so you you're real familiar with the um the usa bmx rules correct as far uh, as like 30 feet line and just like yeah. i don't know just like just the basic rules like yeah. are, is there anything different in you know in australian leagues uh, that we don't have the the start hill rule so you can come out and chop someone if you want but like, <laughs> I like the way she said, chop them. <laughs> right? Yeah, right get on the plate. Off you go. Yeah. yeah, but no one really does that. Um, 
Yes, it's kind of otherwise it's all like the same rules. Can't like go off the track and come back on in a better position. Like, yeah, rules are pretty plain. Okay. That's pretty cool. I was just saying, so I think was the pros though. The pros here, they don't have a 30 foot rule as well. It's just, it's just yeah. the rest of us. But yeah, you're in the pro session, you guys do or don't. Sorry. Uh, yeah, we don't. On the eight meter, there's, yeah, there's like no rules. How was your how was your first time actually going onto an eight meter hill? Was did it was it something that you had to like mentally conquer with like or was you just like let me have at it? This looks awesome. Yeah, I was just like yeah, get me up there. I took like a couple roll down runs and then I followed in Max Cans and Bodie Turner and like I just hit it. I don't really get I don't really get scared of the eight meters like okay. They don't bother me. I'll roll down like twice and then I'll just go jump it. Just to like, because everyone's gonna do it when you're up there. So. Right, right. So yeah, jumping to you, so jumping for you isn't like a problem. You you can go ahead and just get up there, and just yeah. send it. Except for like last night, I hit where our Australian titles was. I hit um the boys pro straight last night. That freaked me out a little bit. That took me a bit to <laughs> get and go at it. My right. brother's just like, oh my god, just do it. It's so easy. <laughs> But like, yeah, the eight meters, I just like roll down a couple times and then just hit it because there's no yeah. point of like thinking were or worrying about. Were you always jumping from like early on, or? Yeah, I thank mom and dad for that so much. Really? Yeah, yeah, because over here, like, that's something the kids really, the younger kids lack. I feel like the parents aren't keen on like, oh, you know, they'll get hurt or something. Like, so they they just keep putting it off and off and off and then they end up getting to 14 and they don't know how to jump and then you have to rebuild them at that age and it's kind of like, oh, right. you're almost about to go on to the eight metre and that's a pretty like, big bump <laughs> for you to hit. Right, right. We hmm. we always like, well, we learned to ride a bike at two without training wheels. So we were always like jumping off gutters and stuff. So okay. yeah, jumping kind of comes natural for us too. Okay. What about manual? Is that something that comes natural for you guys too? Like, is it better to learn the manual first or to jump first? Um, I would prefer to jump something than manual. It. I just, I'm not, not great at manualing, but I'm not like terrible. Like, okay. I definitely can improve in it. Okay. But my brother, he will just like go down a straight with his front wheel up and just do the whole thing. Like, right. he manages on the eight meter start hill from the top. Like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah we, we I had one guy he was he was able to manual and turn his handlebars sideways and then yeah. just back and just yeah do oh, one handed yeah, he was one handed. handed yeah yeah we were just was like, that, dude. Was that yep yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I seen that he's that like dude it. come on and he's just I'm like is it easy for you and he's like oh, yeah kind of <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, well, yeah, Blake and um Wade, the other guy that's sponsored by Fox, they're like our most like skillful, they can whip and everything, like they just look so smooth on a the bike. There's um so your guys is racing uh circuit out there. Do you guys do the same thing with trophies and stamps or is it just trophies? Just trophies or well like the pros they'll get prize money. Um okay. Yeah, but you just like little kids will get a medal or a trophy or something. There's okay. no steps, but it's it's a good idea. Like I liked it because my last race, I just ended up getting stamps, and then I just went to the um, the tent and brought like a t-shirt or something. Like I think that's better. How how are you on race days? Do you get nervous still? No, I think I like hit twelve, and I was just like. I kind of grew out of my butterflies and stuff. But I used to like, sometimes I won't eat. Like, I'm not nervous, but I'll feel like I want to throw up. Mm. But I don't feel nervous. Like, I won't, I won't eat something. But other than that, like, I'm pretty good. So are you, like, usually relaxed on race days? Like, even leading up to, like, staging and getting on the gate? Are you, yeah. like, I, there's, like, two different races I noticed. One's, like, me, I'm up there, I'm dancing, I'm talking, I'm yelling at the race that's on the track now. I don't care. I'm just loose like that. Yeah. But, um, and I ride good like that, I feel, you know. 
But then you yeah. have some riders that are like, you know, like, don't talk to me, bro. Like, you know, I'm mentally preparing myself for this race and then visualizing yeah. this turn. And it's like, I, I'm not saying they're taking it too seriously because some of these guys are pros and they're getting paid and they're sponsored. But it's yeah. like, I've noticed the guys that ride, like, you know, that that's how they they are before race. They, I just don't feel like they do as good. You know, the guys that are loose, they just, they ride really good, you know? Yeah, I found that that when I was in Argentina, I listened to one song the whole weekend and I just like was just trying to be as chill and relaxed and like happy on the gate. Mm -hmm. I just like kept playing it over and over again in my head. I feel like it definitely helped me instead of like, because like I would have been a little bit like, well, these girls, like I've always like watched them right. and then to be on the gate with them. So I was just kind of like trying to stay relaxed, just keep listening to my song in my head. So there you go. Yeah. So who, who was the one rider you got up on the gate with? You looked over, you were like, holy crap, bro. That's her. Holy. Like um, well, just like all of them. Like, <laughs> so I, raced, I raced with Ava when I was in America. So, like, she's a good giggle to have on the gate with. Um, yeah, and, like, just World 1 and all that. Like, to get on, because I've, like, watched them the whole two seasons be on there. And I was just, like, to get on the gate be like, Oh shit, like I'm actually meant to be here. Like, okay, I'm here for a reason. I can do this. <laughs> yeah. No doubt. No doubt. The um one of the other things that I was gonna ask too is the song. So what's the song that you listen to? Over um, and over. I don't think you guys would know it, but um, so one of our like Aussie rap artists remade this song called Boys Light Up. Okay. So okay. Yeah. It's like a bit of Aussie accent, like rapping, just okay. getting me speed up. <laughs> yeah. It's a little bit and different to us. And Shannon, have you heard anything about that? Uh, we, I just got caught off for a second. I didn't hear the last minute. So this is the Aussie rap. Okay. And I'll say, because uh, Shannon's a DJ, so he knows all types of music. Yeah. Have you heard of that? No, I haven't. She said that because I was asking her what the one song is that she listens to over and over. Yeah. And so, so she said that's basically it's just a you know it's yeah. like what's the what's the name? Of, is it a person or a group? Yeah. So chill in it. Um, he's yeah like an Aussie artist. He's remade this like old old song called Boys Light Up, and then like put a bit of a new spin and twist on it. Has a good like beat that was just like pumping me up <laughs> throughout the weekend. Okay. I'm gonna, to, yeah. I'm gonna have to look that one up. <laughs> That's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah, I can't really like I don't really listen to country. I found that when I was over there. That's what everyone just like vibes to. This <laughs> country, and I'm just like uh no, we don't. <laughs> I mean the people you hung around with, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> it was either that or Taylor Swift. Oh, <laughs> That's, I think that's one of Shannon's favorites right there, too. Once, he, uh, once he's done freezing up over there. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> but um, one of the also things that I want to ask you, too, is what, what's, what's your goals for the next three years? Like, what do you what exactly do you need to accomplish or want to actually do? Or have you not thought um, that far out? Oh, probably maybe not three years, but like all the World Cups. I do want to end up trying to be based in America, just like riding with all your riders. Um, yeah, Worlds, if that's a thing every every year, if I can do that. But, like, I think I'm going to stay in under 23s until, like, my time's up because then by the time my under 23 years is up, then right. it'll be Olympics, like, the next year, and then I can go into elite and try to – 2028 Olympics. Okay. Yeah. So just like you, international. You, stuff. So are you saying you want to come to the U.S. and actually like live here and race the U.S. circuit? Yeah, that's. I feel like you can, like, looking from out over here, that you guys can like live off your racing. Where, I feel like here we don't get that great of prize money. Like, yeah, you can't okay. really live off your winnings. Okay. Where if, like, yeah, I feel like it's just good weather. People are good. I 
would have so much competition. Yeah, no, definitely. How would um what state would you choose? Do you know? That was my question. <laughs> <laughs> um, we suggest them? Well, I only went to Florida and California, so I was gonna say Florida probably is the one where everybody tends yeah. to want to go to. Either of those, they were great. I loved it. Well, that just yeah. seems like the two main spots that pros are training, right? I mean, yeah. Well, that's the thing. I loved like Chula with that facility because we stayed there for a week and rode that track. That was sick. That so much different though because it was like lippy and that was like my kind of type of jumps. That's a lot of yeah. people's favorite track. What we asked, they a lot of people mentioned Chula Vista. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, and if I, I asked them if there was like one track that I need to race at, they mentioned Chula Vista. You know, they say take a trip yeah. over there and race that track. It's so fun. Yeah. So with your guys's, um, so how do you guys have like um, like a rating system? So how do you know where you're placed throughout the year on your guys' scale? Is it something that's an online thing like us where we know where yeah. our points are? Yeah. So like it's it's all on scores. So, um, well, I guess, like, when the three of us come together, then you kind of, like, you know, once you've raced them for that weekend, where you're at. But there's, like, there's not really the whole year racing right. into points. It's kind of, like, each individual race that you're at. The only thing that comes together as points is our national series, which okay. is over the, the whole year. But your best three results count. So I won that this year at Aussies. Nice. Yeah. So that's like the only thing that um yeah that our points like calculate to. So I was I was watching the I think it was the British national championships. It was like a few months back. And um as the riders are getting into the gate, the silence, the second the gate drops, this they have a DJ there. They start playing music like <laughs> up tempo house music like club music. Like the whole time the race is going on, then when the guys get back in the gate, it, it the music stops for a second. As soon as the gate drops, more music is playing. It's just <laughs> insane. And I was like, that's the coolest shit ever. Yeah. Like, I would love that. Like, would you be able to ride with like music blasting through speakers like throughout the track? Would that pump you up your yeah. people? Uh, yeah, definitely like in practice. I feel like it's really quiet here. Like our, our commentators aren't very like into it. Like I love your one um American commentator, he's like, he just, he has such a good energy for it where it's like, I feel like ours are just the same tempo the whole lap. There's not much like excitement, even though like if at your racing, if there's no excitement, he still like makes it seem like there is. Yeah. And and can you, like when you race, do you hear that? Can you hear the crowd? Do you hear the announcer? I, I hear the commentator. I don't hear the crowd, but yeah, I listen. <laughs> I don't know how, but I just like listen to everything they kind of say. And if he's good, he can help you out. He can let you know where people are and right. where hit pocket if they're coming up on you fast or, you know, so I yeah, can hear that too. That's why I always ask if people hear that, you know. Yeah. I think I'm like the only one that does. Because I always like say it. I'll be like, oh, you know, they said this. And dad's like, dude, are you even racing if you can hear that? <laughs> <laughs> I talk during races and everything, but I'm not at that level where I shouldn't be, you know, so I just have fun with it. Yeah. And I'm well, on the gate talking. It's like, whatever. I'll talk to myself, like, in a lap. Yeah. <laughs> There's a kid that I know that does the same thing. He actually, he has a GoPro, and one time he, he um, sent me a video, and I was like, bro, you, like, talking yourself through the race? He's like, yeah, I do it, bro. And I'm like, get out of here. <laughs> no, <laughs> I mean, whatever works, man. Yeah, he, yeah, pretty much. Nice. Yeah, whatever, whatever works, man. That's pretty dope. Like I just, I mean, I mean, have you? So, do do you wear a GoPro when you when you ride, or have you worn one? I have like twice. Okay. Oh, I never could set it up on the right angle, so we kind of just gave up on it. Okay. <laughs> so I would say is it something that you would use for training, so you could see like how it looks to you, to be like, oh, I could have did this, or I could have done that. You no, know, you, we just like. We'll just video an effort on our phone or something. Okay. Or yeah. Do you study the um the women riders as well? Like, do you go like look at footage and watch their races and see what you're up against on certain races, or you just you get there and you just do your own thing? 
You just get <laughs> <laughs> well, I I mean, stop- it. Like I'll, I mean, I'll watch like if a video comes up, like if Ava's video comes up, I'll sit there and like watch one, like I'll watch the video and then I'll scroll again, but I don't stalk anyone. <laughs> yeah, I mean, because I mean, because we're like, I mean, I mean, I'm old school, so I come from a different sports background where it's like you got to watch game footage because there might be some sort of tick that they don't know that they do that might work into your advantage. So you're sitting there, you're like, all right, when they do this, I can tell they can already set up for that, and just you know, it's just something that I always you know like to do since football days. But you know, whatever. So, yeah, I just kind of rock up to the race and. Oh, should we be right. Yeah, so, yeah. like, this is mine. Move out the way. <laughs> yeah. Have you, have you ever had a race where you didn't get a practice lap before the race? Where maybe you showed a blade or, you know, you didn't show up on practice day and you ended up showing up on just – do they have practices before, like, big races? Or, because our yeah. nationals, they, like, eliminated the practices, like, on Saturday, you know, on the – what is it, Saturdays and Sundays, I guess, right? Mm-hmm, yep. Yeah, yeah, there's no practice on Saturdays or Sundays, just the Friday. So if there's a three-day national, they'll just have practice that Friday for 20 minutes, each group or whatever it is, maybe two laps. And then Saturday, yeah, Sunday, was... you don't get a practice lap. So if that you show up so... on Saturday. Yeah, but we yeah, we don't have anything like that. You just – everyone gets their practice. You'll get, like, maybe five laps. Oh, wow. Yeah, they, they we just don't have as many kids. Yeah. So, on and your what guys about like, gearing? Oh, um, Are we in delay? Pardon? No, no, you're good. No, I was wondering. I yeah, I was wondering if we were on some kind of delay. It just seems like yeah, we're just not in sync. That's all. But do you switch gears between different tracks, or do you just run the same gear throughout all the different tracks? Um, I pretty much run the same gear. I have, like, I've just been changing. For the eight meter yesterday, I changed my gearing to go a little bit harder because I looked a bit spinny. But yeah, my my gearing's the same at pretty much every track. Yeah. Okay. So you said were Just, you feeling spinny, or did somebody like recognize that, like your brother or your father? Like, uh, do they help with uh, stuff yeah. like that? Yeah, my dad and my coach, like, they both seen it a little bit because I would like get out to the kink with the boys, and then they would like take off a fair bit where I feel like I should have been like a little bit closer. So I changed it yesterday, but to be honest, I didn't even feel the difference. Nice. Yeah. That's I'm how like, it should be, that's right? A thing or bad thing, but I guess that means I can push a hard gear now. So, take so, you running, so are you running like what a 45, 16? Um, I, so I normally do a 44, 16. But I changed it to a fifty eighteen yesterday. Oh, you went with the California rollout. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's what they that's what they call it. They, when you ride the big uh chain ring and the big cog, they call it California gearing. Because I don't know. We call it dinner plate. Or <laughs> dinner <laughs> plate, yeah. <laughs> I never heard that one before. That's funny. <laughs> That's funny because I was watching this whole thing about gearing, you know, and um, about the bigger gears compared to the smaller gears. This one guy chimed in. He says since 2007, he's been riding like a, I don't know, uh, 22 7 or something like that, which is comparable to a 44 16, but he just runs the smaller gears. Yeah. Okay. You know, so a regular race bike, and he got these tiny freestyle looking, you know, park bike gears on his bike, you know. So it's yeah. the same rollout, but. I don't know why he does it. He says he's saving weight. That's one reason. Um, yeah, I know. And then um, I, I forgot what the other reason was, but it's just like it looks so weird on the bike. And then there was another bike put right next to it that had like a 5018, and that thing looked humongous. It's like, geez, it looks cool though. Yeah. <clears throat> um, I was gonna say also too, just um when you're racing and, and you get to the finish line. Do you go? Do you do you immediately think back to what could you have done to to be better on that lap, or do you just like how do you? What's your process after once you cross the finish line? Um. Well, we like turn around, shake hands, and stuff, and then I like mm-hmm. just walk back to the tent. Mum would normally have like recorded it, and I'll just like sit there and watch it, have okay. a look, or like 
dad and coach and my brother will like say, oh, you know, you should have manured that instead of jumping that or like you didn't pedal hard enough here. Okay. Yeah, I don't really like over the line. I don't think, don't think about what I should have done in the lap, but like, yeah, I'll just like watch the video and kind of like notice what I could tweak a bit for the next lap. Okay. So like my my goals when I get on the gate have kind of just like got to get a faster lap time or like do this jump, do that jump. Because like in Victoria, there's probably like there's not even a gate of eight of us. We're just off moto points, which is four races. So there's not like there's between all of us, there's a big gap between everybody in our lap. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of just like my goals not like make sure you beat everybody it's kind of just like hit this target and that target in a lap okay so i mean i i came back racing again as an adult maybe two and a half years ago so i, I have a certain amount of races under my belt this is one race that i wish i could do over i mean it just keeps replaying in my head if i would have just did this i would have won i wanted to beat this one guy so bad and that was like my only chance to do it and I did it. And it just like, I, I replay that race in my head. Is there like a race that you wish you could do over? Like a race um, that's just like, oh my God, I had it. I was in first and I got passed or, you know, whatever it may have been. Yeah, I have a couple. So like my last year in age for Aussies, I, I jumped the last jump instead of manually it. Like I made a really good comeback. Like I was in second by like three bike lengths and I just like horsed it. And it was like to the line and I jumped and I didn't manual and I lost it by like this much. Oh. And I was just like, and everyone said it to me. They're like, why did, why the hell did you jump? I'm like, oh, I've been doing it all weekend. <laughs> yeah. And then like, um, 20, 2022 worlds. I feel like I, cause like going into it, we were like qualified out wide a little bit because I'd never done any like, um, UCI races or anything, but I like came into the first corner and then Sabina like pushed me out wide and I had to like jump off pro straight lip. So like, I guess trying to get in a better position in that first corner. Cause like I was in, I was in fourth, like I almost had it, but just got pushed wide. Yeah, I'm shaking my head. Like I, like I get it. Like, oh yeah, that's what I would have done too. <laughs> <laughs> you push everybody wide, bro. Right. Well, everyone's always like, you're a big dude, just mow them over. And I'm like, dude, 20-year-old me, not a problem. But like now I'm like, it, it's I can get hurt, they can get hurt, and nobody's paying us for this. It's not that serious for me. So I'm just yeah. out there having fun. You know, like we go to the track, and like Shannon was saying, so we went to, I think it was Georgia or something. And he was trying to get me to go out there to practice with them before the race started. And I was just like, nah, I don't I don't practice. Um, <laughs> he's just like, what are you doing? I'm like, no, my first lap this is my practice lap. So my first lap, I get out there and I'm racing with them. And my I'm literally like looking who I can pick off. Like, all right, I know. So on my second lap, I can get that guy, that guy. So, all right, cool. Get a feel for the track. Cool. Second lap, I go out there. And I just, I got to be one. So I just go out there and I just try to get get those guys. And it, it worked. My plan worked for me in novice. But in an intermediate, I don't stand a chance. I'm like, I got to come with a whole different game plan this year. So this is the year. 24 is my year is what I tell everybody. I'm going to I'm gonna roll hard this year and I'm going to jump something. Nobody believes I'm going to jump anything. But I'm going to jump a tabletop. I might break, I, I might break on, the, on the landing, but I will be in the air. <laughs> Make sure you get it on video then. <laughs> I'm oh, hoping. Oh, there's oh, I'm no hoping. doubt we're gonna get it on video, right? I'm hoping. I'm like, dude, if he cuts that camera and when I do decide to jump it and I and I like make it, I'm gonna be so mad. I'm gonna be right there, <laughs> catching it all, bro. Maybe to get on the bike on the track, I'm gonna be right there. <laughs> you know what I'm hoping for. <laughs> so how many how many nationals have you raced over here? Um. Two. Okay. I did uh, Bakersfield. Okay. And then I did Oldsmar. Nice. Yeah. So we went like for three Oldsmar. weeks and then we got those two done. But I'd love to like go back and qualify and then to be able to 
to the end of your race. So wait a minute though. So you said you did Bakersfield. So Bakersfield is California. Yeah. And then Oldsmar, Florida. Yeah. So we flew we flew to LA from here and then we went to Florida, raced to Oldsmar, stayed there for a week. Then we went to Chula, stayed there for a week, and then we raced Bakersfield and then we came back home. And we did all that with that with Sam and Elise. Jordan Callum, Tay Rufus, and Joel Marsh. So they took the four of us over and we did that. It was pretty oh, sick. Wow. That's pretty cool. That actually yeah. is pretty cool. I'd love to do that again. And no issues with the bikes on the planes and No. Nah, I I've only had one issue, which losing my bike. I lost it for two days, which was when we when everyone went to Argentina because it was such a small airport. And everyone had so much luggage each that they didn't even load anything onto the first plane that left there the next day after the World Cup. So everyone's luggage was like a day behind them. Ooh. So everyone lost their stuff. So it was it was all right. We didn't lose it on the way, but we lost it on the way home. So it was okay. Yeah, I was going to say better than, than having to borrow a bike or something because I've heard people having to do that. Yeah. Do you, like, so um, do you have just one? Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, when you get like a new setup, like a new bike, how long does it take you to get used to that bike? I've heard people say, ah, oh, just a few laps and I'm, I'm good, you know. But how yeah. long would it take you to get used to a, a different bike? Um, Like, are you saying like a whole different frame? Like, and yeah, all, like, totally different. Yeah, because just like swapping the frame is not that much of a different if you have all your old parts on it, you know, but just yeah. like a totally new rig. Um, yeah, maybe just like a few laps or so. I knew she was say that. Nice. It would take me like a whole year, you know? <laughs> right? It was like, nah, this don't feel right. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure. I haven't really had to like get used to it in a certain amount of time to know like what it is. The, the bike before your prophecy, was that carbon as well? No. Dude, oh, that thing was a tank. That Nearly weighed 10 kilos. The sun, right? I was about to ask you, was it a big difference yeah. when you switched over to Prophecy? Yeah, it, everything was like so light. It was, it was so much better. Yeah, it's just like, whoa, this is what a bike is meant to feel like. <laughs> is there is there an age limit for you to clip in over there? Because I know you said you clipped in at like 12. Can you clip in at like 8 or 9? Not anymore. So we used to be able to. Okay. Um, yeah, so sprockets here. That we were allowed to run clips as a sprocket. And then I don't know if it was a UCI rule or something. It came in and now the age is you have to be turning 13 and you can then jump onto clips. Okay. Might have been around the same time we stopped, you know, letting kids mm -hmm. on clips, you know. And that's the yeah, same I age, I think. I think you have to be 12 or 13 in order to run yeah. clips. It was probably like four years ago or so that they changed the rule. That, that really affected the kids that were riding on clips for, you know, a couple of years previously then had to get back on flats. Like the, the yeah. parents were, yeah, they were up in arms. They just, they didn't understand. They didn't want to do it. They were pushing yeah. back, you know, heavily about that. And I get yeah. it, you know. Yeah, I feel like it helps the kids now, though, that once they get onto clips because then they learn how to jump and not use their clips to jump. But I feel like you see that a lot when kids, like, transition – they had no idea how to jump on flats. And then as soon as they go on clips, they just like lift with their clips. So it's like, it's going to help them in the long run. That's pretty cool. Do you, that, do you ride like flats me. often? Do you train in flats at all or no? Um, I only really do sprints in flats. I don't do track sessions. If I go to a pump track, I'll do flats because I'm scared to do clips on a pump track. Mm. So... So yeah, do you do sprint? Do you do sprints and clips at all? Yeah, so it's like a mixture. Depends in like what block I'm in, to as if like what I do. So why would you? Why would you switch back and forth? Like why would you ever do um, <laughs> sprints on flats? Um, well, so when I do sprints on flats, I'll do a really heavy gearing as well, like off the block, and a short distance. And then when I go into clips, it's usually downhill in a spinny gearing. So I, I don't, I'm not really sure of like why 
we're on flats to do it, but. Well, that makes just, sense. I guess it would give you more used to just mashing, you know, that, that, that front, that front pedal, you know, without yeah. pulling up. And when you get to pull up, you're just that much stronger, you know? Yeah. Yeah, and I've never heard that. I just thought um, most people, when I see people doing sprints, they're either on flats or clips, and I thought that was pretty much it. I never really knew they would switch back and forth. Or I've heard yeah. somebody switching back and forth. So do you ever have an issue of, like, pulling your back leg off of a flat pedal, like, you know, thinking that you were clipped in? Uh, no, nah, not really. Like, my feet will slip off occasionally, but it's not like I just ripped it off or something. Yeah, I don't really have that issue. Yeah, well, remember, um, oh, go ahead. Now, I was gonna say when I first got on clips, man, I was like, I was pulling up to my, I think I was pulling up to my mailbox, and I thought I was on flats, you know. So I slow down to like a stop, you know, and then I was like, oh shit, I didn't realize my feet were stuck to my pedals, and I just like fell right over in the middle of the street next to my mailbox, and I'm laying there like <laughs> I don't believe this just happened, you know. The cars <laughs> are like going around me, passing me. I'm like, oh my god, like help me, man, you know. So I unclip, I get up, I'm all scraped up. I'm like, this sucks, man. So I just always, after that, like when I'm clipped in, I always like took one foot off first as I'm slowing down and then yeah. make sure the other one. Yeah. So it doesn't take long after you fall to get it right. <laughs> Put it together. Yeah. Especially when you lay in the middle of the street, you know, but it's just, yeah, I tell people that all the time, man, practice and grass, practice, practice, practice. Cause people just, they, they turn up into the class where they can wear clips and they just want to jump in clips because they're just like, I got to get fast, bro. You know? And yeah. th those are the most dangerous guys. They're 50 years old, you know, on a two wheel bike with clips on, just trying to go as fast as they can. Not cool. Yeah. <laughs> Not, cool. Not, cool. Not cool, bro. I still, I still fall over in the pits, though. So it's, right. it's off the track. It's not on the track. <laughs> There we go. All of a sudden, you, have, you, have you ever come unclipped in the gate? Yeah, at Aussie Titans, I did. Uh, it was our first first moto. I was so pumped. I was like ready to go because we we only had seven of us. So it was off moto points again. So four races, oh, three races. So whoever had the lowest points then obviously wins overall. First race. Unclipped straight out of the air. I was like, "You've got to be kidding me!" Because I'm like, moto points. I got to get like a top three or something, so that if something does happen, it can better my points. Right. I had to pump the whole first straight, and then I was just like, had to mow everyone down. And I got back to four. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, I was just That's like, cool. I got back to the pits, and I was like, just don't even talk to me. I was like, <laughs> I was so, I was so pissed off. But then oh. everyone's just like, oh, you know, you still get, did good to get back to, like, second overall. I was just like, yeah, but, like, if that race hadn't happened, like, what it could have been. But I got to redeem myself on two days later for um, Superclass. So that was actually – that was off the final. So I won that one. So I was pretty happy with that. Right. That's pretty dope. Yeah. But especially when you want to get first and it's like, you know, you get second and everybody's like, yo, you should be happy with yourself. And you're like, shut oh, up, man. Get out of here. You know? <laughs> like, I want to know, man. Second place. I don't want to hear that. And sometimes you, and then later on, you like sit down and be like, you know what? I'm happy with that. You know, but it's okay. <laughs> at the at the time, don't even know, man. No, no. Second is not good, bro. <laughs> you know, he doesn't, want, he doesn't want to hear like when people tell him that. Yeah. Oh, you made mains, bro. It's like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so what? Like, you don't want to hear none of that. <laughs> no, I don't, man. He's like, just tell me the truth. And I'm like, all right, well, let me tell you what you did wrong. You know, so. Yeah. And he, that's how he is with me, too. He's like, he's like, you want to know what you did wrong? And I'm like, yeah, I do. He goes, well, you see that hole straight right there? And I go, yeah. He goes, you didn't pedal none of that. And you came around the turn. You didn't pedal nowhere <laughs> in between there. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I watched I'm the like, race this dude, I swear. He pedaled three times, you know, the whole race. I <laughs> <laughs> and and I'm and I'm in the back, but I'm not like getting blown out. So I'm like, wow, you know, they're like, yeah, imagine if you learn to pedal. And I'm like, right? I'm like, but well, I don't want to go that much faster. And they're like, why? I'm like, because it scares me. So I just so I'm just in the, you know, just I'm going at my pace and, <laughs> and I'm good. <laughs> so for 24 is my year. Going for it. All right. I look forward to yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> Have, have you ever raced cruiser? 
Yeah, I did. Is for... Cruiser a big thing out there? Or? Nah, not like you guys. It's like a mm, couple, couple ages. Uh, we'll have like, if they're lucky, a semi. But it's not that big over here. Um, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Something's, no, I heard something outside. I'm sorry. Okay. I was going to ask, so what's your favorite movie? Um, That's a hard one. <laughs> um, I do like a bit of like the Disney movies or Fast and Furious. I like right. them. Yeah. Have you ever so, seen the movie Rad? Yeah. I do like that movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I say, I say my my best BMX movie is Pee Wee Herman's Big Adventure, and they're they, they, that's the face that they made. They're like, it's not even a BMX movie. I'm like, there's people in the riding BMX, so it counts, it counts. So I don't even know what that is. <laughs> yeah, I don't either. Oh, it's it's a movie from oh my gosh, is it an '80s movie? I think it's probably the '80s. It's old. It's an old movie. It's definitely an old movie. But um, also too. So those are your movies. Do you have like um? Do you like? Is there certain movies that like inspire you to be like, all right, I'm gonna watch this because it gets me to move. Like some people out here, they like to watch rock. You know, it was something inspirational. And they watch that. The music pumps them. Like this is my go-to. Like I gotta watch that. Is there anything like that that you might watch before um racing? Um. Yeah, I have this. Um this lion like mentality thing off youtube that i have that i watch that before like a final or something just to like it's just like it asks you like are, are you a lion or a gazelle like because if like you're a gazelle you're just gonna run away from everything but like right. if you're a lion you're just gonna hunt and kill everything yeah so that, like i had that at the world cups like playing in my head as well okay and you have your own YouTube channel, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Surprise you. <I> mean, <laughs> I mean, we do we do a little research around here. So what exactly is your channel about? Um, it's just like me and my brother's like life and just we just have fun with it. We don't really have like we don't have a planned schedule or anything yet, but like we definitely do want to get into it a bit more, like with all our traveling, do um, like vlogs and videos, a bit of fun stuff. Now, do you have, because I just, like I said, I just, <clears throat> just came across it earlier. Do you have one where it's like a day in the life to where they follow you from the time you get up to the time you race later that day? Not yet. Okay. Um, but we have like, we'll have race day videos on there that are like from breakfast, like through the whole day. Okay. But, yeah, I do want to do like a day in life, like straight out of bed, right. uh, go to the coffee shop. <laughs> does your, I was going to say, does your brother want to move to the States also and race? Yeah, definitely. That's a goal for us too. We'll get like this year out of the way um, with all the World Cups and stuff, save up a bit of coin and hopefully we can move over there, do some racing. But I think we'll go. Probably go back and forth for a little bit until maybe he gets eighteen to eighteen, and then okay. we'll look at living over there. Have you, have you decided? Have you decided where you want to race for next season over here? No, nah, wouldn't have a clue. Okay. What do you guys recommend? Rock Hill is definitely going to be one of them. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Trying to think what else is like we're the really big national, like the Derby City, of course, right? Music Derby City, City, Big City, Nashville. Yeah, um, that looks cool this year. Those are the fun tracks, also. Everybody loves Nashville. They say the first straight is just really fast and just it's a really good like I mean the weather's always good, I think, right? I've never been there, but Everett's been there, I think, a few times, right? Mm -hmm. But they say the weather's always good and it just the atmosphere is good, and just like after the races, like you can go in town and it's like a lot of stuff to do, like you have like you know, it's just a lot of fun. Yeah. I think Rockstar, right? Rockstar in Texas. That Rockstar in Texas really, is yeah, a lot of people that talk one about amazing. that one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What about Tulsa? 
Talk Which about one? the har- oh yeah, the harvesty track, yo. The, oh, the, uh, the headquarters. Yeah. That oh, is yeah. bananas. Oof. <laughs> okay. That yeah. one with the one will get you ready to go overseas and you know, <laughs> I, I think you know you so I everybody <laughs> Yes, I mean that yeah, definitely one you want to go to. People go over there to train, yeah. And then we actually had a few people go over there and like crash, like go out there for grands. You know, and ride the track like the day before the grands is supposed to start and crash and not be able to race the rock of grands because of that. Yeah, kind wow. of crazy. Yeah. Which is kind of stupid because like this one guy that I know, he's an older guy and he should have knew better. <laughs> the young kids, they just go, you know, it's up to the parents, I guess, to tell, hey, little Johnny, get off the track. You might hurt yourself. But the old guys, yeah. we go there, we just crash and just sit around the whole weekend wishing we didn't do it. <laughs> how we do it so we should wrap this up man i was gonna say yeah i'm good you have any other questions that you want to ask or we could, we could go all night um no right <laughs> what is the time uh, right it now is, it's nine o'clock, nine o'clock p.m p.m yeah. awesome so thank you for your time um we'll probably i'm gonna have to edit the video in probably just a little bit and then we'll put it out sometime we want to do next thursday we'll probably put it out next thursday yeah, but I'll email you and I'll get you all the information so you can see it. Um, just whoever you're training, whoever you're coaching, whoever you're – let everybody know about it and follow us on Instagram as well as over yeah. on Facebook and stuff. And just, you know, let them know and we'll definitely, you know, get it out there for you. Is there anything that you have as a, like a personal promotion that we can add? Um, Just my, my Instagram and maybe YouTube. YouTube. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. you don't have so you don't have anything like a protein shake where you're like you sponsored by this protein shake and you get like a percentage of it or anything like that. Um, I'm sponsored by Masashi. Like I have a discount code that people can use. Okay, so yeah, I'm yeah. De- definitely when you can give me give give that to me so that way I can add that to yeah, some other, and, other podcasts well, and stuff. Shred Shred Bike Care. So I have a discount code for them as well. Okay, because okay. we've been doing it's like how this is right here, where it's just, you know, yeah. like you get a picture of you, and then that way they'll know to use that code for you, so that way you get something for yeah. doing it, and we'll throw it up there. So yeah, get, just get that to us whenever you can, and yeah. we'll get added to the other podcasts and everything. So and that's pretty much it. I guess we're good. Thank you for your time. And, um, Thank you. But yeah, I was like, for, us, awesome. for us, it's good night. <laughs> for you, it's, you know, good noon. Good day. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. Thanks so much so, for having me. Thank you. So good to get to know you guys. Indeed. Thank you and good luck. We'll see you out here um, sometime next year. Yeah, for sure. All right. right, right, Thanks so much.